Hello, my name is Peter Steedman and today I would like to talk about pain. I'm a psychotherapist, intuitive, a healer, a teacher. I trained in clinical hypnotherapy. I've always been interested in the connection between the mind and the body. It fascinates me when I have dealt with many, many people over the last 23 years and also of my family members who I helped through their pain to notice how there was a connection between the part of the body that manifested the pain and to how it was relevant to them unconsciously. For instance, I remember having, when I was growing up, constant throat problems. I was always suffering from sore throats, from tonsillitis three times a year, to the point where the doctors even talked about taking my tonsils out. I realised as well, there came the point when Every year I noticed I was suffering these throat conditions because I was not speaking out, I was not speaking my truth. That didn't mean I had to stand on a rooftop shouting out about my beliefs, what I felt about life, or what I was angry about or upset about at that time, whatever injustice was on. But it was about really about being able to speak freely and openly. You see, I was brought up in a loving family but in a belief system where I had to conform to the belief systems of my parents. I didn't have the conviction in those belief systems. I tried very hard to fit in with them because it was what they wanted and I didn't know any different. But as I got older, I wanted to ask more questions and I couldn't. I wanted to explore more, I wanted to speak out, but I couldn't because I didn't want to hurt people's feelings. And as a result of that, my throat chakra, the energy here, right here in the throat, started to become stifled and blocked. And as a result of that, it manifested as tension within the throat, and then that tension manifested as a symptom which could be felt as pain. Of course, with treatment and with rest and with help and the many, many times that I had to have cider vinegar and honey and such forth, it helped to ease the throat, but it didn't clear the problem. I was still not speaking out until it came to the point when I was 26 and I left home, left that belief system and started to ask questions and started to explore and find out what it was that made me happy, what it was that I wanted to, to understand and without the fear of being criticised or being put down or told just to be quiet and to do as I was told. And as I started to do that, my throat became clear and to this day it's very hard to remember since that time having a serious throat problem or even a sore throat since that point. We then think about the other problems we would get when we have pain. When we have emotional pain, how many times have, have you been in a situation where you can't speak out, maybe a situation at work where you can't speak out because you have to conform, because you are aware that you have to just do as you're told and therefore you take criticism, unfair criticism from a boss or a manager. What about in difficult relationships where you're constantly being criticised or told to be quiet because your opinion doesn't count? What about for a young child at school who may feel that they're not being listened to? And what about the people that have eye problems? What is it they are not wanting to see in their lives? What about those who have ear problems? What is it they don't want to hear? I remember a remarkable session I had with a gentleman and he had divorced and he was engaged to be married to a woman that loved him. But when he came to me he had a lot of physical problems. One of the ailments was he was profoundly deaf, very limited hearing in both ears. When I asked him about the personal bad experiences he'd had in life he told me that when he was a young boy his father used to regularly beat him in the yard with his leather belt and the beating was always around the ears. He was always being shouted at and being criticised. When he got older he got into a relationship and got married to an abusive wife who also criticised him and put him down. Therefore it wasn't surprising that his body was trying to protect him so his ears, if they could talk, would say I will stop you from hearing all this abuse so that you don't get that pain and suffer that pain anymore. But then he came to the point where he had become strong enough 
to move out from that relationship with his ex-wife and would now met someone who he loved and she loved him. And she loved him so much she was always telling him that she loved him but he couldn't hear because the ears and the unconscious mind was still stuck in the memory of all that abuse and all that trauma and shock from when he was young. So I work with him to help the body to reprocess those memories, to understand that it was now here, not back there when he was a little boy, not when he was in that difficult and critical relationship of his first marriage, but now he was in a loving relationship with a woman who he loved and who would find that would really appreciate listening to her saying that she loved him and how special he was to her. And you know what, within that hour session, his hearing had returned by 50% just in that one hour, after over 45 years of hearing difficulties. How remarkable the body is, how remarkable your body is. And so, I want to say to you, whatever your pain is, whatever pain that you have experienced, however long ago it was, your body has a remarkable ability to learn how to process it in a different way and to find that your body can learn how to be peaceful. And if it's at peace, then it's difficult for it to be in pain. And if it is more peaceful, then you can have less pain than maybe you've been experiencing now. I wish you well in whatever you're going through at this time to have more peace and less pain. Thank you.